All right, guys, so we have four things as, as somewhat of a self-check to see if you are breathing properly and, and two, if your positioning is correct. So we're going to take Doug here and go through the first one. The first one is just checking the breathing pattern. So he's going to take one hand and put one hand on the chest, and the other hand's going to go right over his belly. And he's just going to take a couple deep breath in, breaths in through the nose and all the way out. What you're looking for here is more of a movement through the belly rather than the chest. Okay, and if you have actually the opposite, if you want more chest movement versus belly, then that's a sign that diaphragms aren't functioning as well as it should. Okay, the expansion should really come through the belly. Think about kind of pushing out through all, all four areas um, on the front, on the sides, and in, in the back. Okay, so minimal movement here, big movement through the belly. So that's going to be uh, self check number one. Okay, the second check here is, is you can do this one in front of a mirror, or if you have someone to watch, you can stay in a supine position. So either standing or supine works. What we're going to do is we're going to actually just look at the belly button. Okay, and as he takes another deep breath in, same thing through the nose, we should see that the belly button dropping purely or down rather than up this way. And again, that's just a good sign that he's expanding down and that the, um, he's getting good intra-abdominal pressure, the diaphragm is, is doing its job. Okay, so again, inferior movement of the belly button on that one. Good. Next one here is more about positioning, okay? And we can do this one with or without weights. So we will start without weight first. But he's going to take his arms and he's going to put them overhead. And then from here, he's going to drop the hands just towards the ground that way, so shoulder flexion. And what we're looking for are two things. One, we're looking for any rib flare. So for a lot of people, that the ribs kind of pop out this way, and that's not where the diaphragm should be positioned. We should actually drop the, the uh, diaphragm of the rib cage down so that you're not getting any rib flare. And then the other thing is that should, there should be more weight um, in through the TL junction. Again, a lot of people kind of arch up as they, as they lift the arms, and really that TL junction should approximate close to the ground. So if he drops this down properly, then he will get that um, TL junction close to the ground. Just make sure that you're not doing a posterior pelvic tilt, which is actually more in through here, and you're not rocking back to push the low back into the ground. That's not the cue at all, okay? So we can also try it with a weight, and this can also become an exercise, which we'll talk about later. So from here, he's just gonna take the arms into shoulder flexion, and again, he's gonna think about reaching up the arms, but dropping down through the chest here, and again, making sure that there's no gapping underneath the body there. Good, and back up. Perfect, okay? And then the last one here is gonna be a seated maneuver, and he's gonna go ahead and come on up, okay? And he's gonna put his hands just around his rib cage this way into the lower, lower sides, okay? This is an assessment test that, that we use um, to evaluate patient breathing. And what I want him to do, and again, is just take a deep breath in through the nose, and you should feel the ribs expanding in the lower kind of posterior lateral portion of the rib cage and not get a ton of um, cephalad movement or upward movement with the chest, okay? So again, you're looking for that rib cage movement in the lower quarter here, in the back, through the sides, um, and not so much upward lift through the chest. So those are going to be your four kind of self-tests for diaphragm function um, and in terms of positioning as well.